Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye. Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church, Johannesburg, South Africa. They are passionate about building families and raising men and women who transform and uplift the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation. Some of their programs include Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Dream Achievers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps and Limitless Men Seminars. They are the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women, and host the annual Power of Women Conferences and Amazing Power of Women Broadcasts. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27814210835. Welcome, it's another Thursday evening and we have the amazing Power of Woman broadcast. We come to you every Thursday at 7 p.m. South African time. We have another exciting episode for you this evening. We have been on a journey of looking at the women in the Bible. We have um, been explaining the different women in the Bible and just learning lessons from their lives on what they did well and what we need to, I mean, what they didn't do so well so we can learn from them and avoid their mistakes but take up the lessons of what they did well so that we can apply it into our lives and just you know, live our lives the way God desired for us to live it. This broadcast, as we've mentioned, I mean, as we always say, is born out of this book, The Amazing Power of Woman, book written by Pastor Chuk, so be now go ahead. And he will be joining me and coming up shortly. The Single Ladies Boot Camp is a program for single ladies from all ages and backgrounds run by Pastor Chooks and Toy Nogoye. Many unmarried women are frustrated, either sitting on the singles bench or struggling in difficult relationships. Why the vicious cycle? Are relationships supposed to be frustrating, painful, hurtful, often going nowhere for years? Women start questioning the existence of good men and of love itself. Some even come to the point of giving up on the idea of marriage altogether. The Single Ladies Boot Camp is run over a weekend and throughout the sessions, ladies are able to explore and learn the principles that govern relationships and biblical standards for relationships. The Single Ladies Boot Camp also teaches how to attract what you are looking for, as well as answering the questions, is there anything wrong with being single? Why do you really want to get married? Why are you not married yet? How do I find a husband? How do I deal with the frustration of waiting to be found? These are all valid questions that single women ask themselves and often break themselves down in trying to answer them. The Single Ladies Boot Camp will answer all those questions and more, giving women a change in perspective, direction, and hope for the future. Pastor Chooks and Toy Nogoye are the lead pastors at Resurrection Life Church, Johannesburg where they place a strong emphasis on family and relationships. Their expertise on relationships has helped hundreds of singles and couples over the years build strong and lasting relationships and or fixing broken ones through their Singles Ignition Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camp, Marriage Seminars, Workshops and Conferences. They are the founders of the Power of Woman Academy and the conveners of the annual Power of Woman Conference Pastor Chooks is the author of the best-selling book, The Amazing Power of Woman. Pastor Chooks and Toyin have been married for over 20 years, and it is their many years of experience in building their own marriage and in third-party marriage interventions that has equipped them with the vital wisdom that they put together in these events. For more information, visit www.slbc.co.za or WhatsApp. 081-421-0835. Good evening, welcome, welcome. This is another edition of The Amazing Power of Woman. My name is Chuck Sugoye. Um, we are sharing from this book. This broadcast is based on revelation that the Lord led us to capture in this book published a few years ago, The Amazing Power of Woman. 
And um, it's been a joy just learning and just sharing with women all over the world the power that God has put inside of them. Um, from the time we published this book till now, the revelation has actually grown, you know. Um, and we, we started this broadcast uh, every Thursday where we're sharing and getting women to see the, the blessing that God had put in them by the power that he, he reposited in them. All right. And um, tonight we are, we are still sharing on the series, The Women of the Bible. And what we've been doing in this series is to profile, you know, several women in the Bible on how they engage the power that God gave them, either positively or negatively. You know, positively, and we've seen, you know, Rebecca, we've seen our mother Sarah, we saw, we saw Eve, you know, and how the enemy hijacked the power and, you know, the consequences of that. We, we have, you know, uh, profiled um, um, Sarah, yeah, Eve, uh, Lydia, and uh, today we have a very interesting woman that we want to profile. Now, this woman is not known by name. We knew her by what she did with the power that God gave, the amazing power that was represented in her. She is known in the scriptures by what she did with that power. She abused that power. So this is the woman that, that we read her story in John chapter 8. The woman caught in adultery. So, so today's title will be The Forgiven Adulteress. That's the woman that we want to deal with. And today, I want to show you God's attitude to uh, the abuse of the power that God has given to women. God's attitude when that power is abused, when the power is used wrongly. Now, one of the things that we've been saying in, in, in learning about the amazing power that God has put inside of women is, women, use your power wisely. Use your power wisely. When you don't use your power wisely, the enemy hijacks it. And when the enemy, this, this, is, this, is, this is important, hear this. When the enemy hijacks your power, you are the first person to pay for it. You are the first person to, to bear the consequence of that abuse. You are the first person. And so, so this is why it's important that you learn you know, the power you have, and then how to protect that power and keep it away from the enemy prying into it and then messing it up or causing you to abuse it because you are the first recipient of the consequence of the abuse of the power that God has given to you. You are the first person who pay for it. So, so this is why it's important that you learn what that power is and how to protect it. But today, we want to show you from scriptures how God behaves. What is God's attitude to the abuse of the power that you have? When you abuse it, when you make a mistake, when you engage that power wrongly, how does God uh, respond? Now, let's start by saying this. Jesus is God. Jesus is the visible expression of God. Jesus is the is the express image of God in the earth. So, so if we want to know how God feels about anything, look at Jesus' response to that thing. If we want to understand how the Father feels, you know, the Bible, Jesus says, whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. You know, if you see me, you see the Father. He says, I do only the things that I see my Father do. Meaning that Jesus was a, a perfect image of the Father. You know, you know when, you, when you stand in front of a mirror and you lift your hands, the image in the mirror is supposed to lift their hands. When you put it down, the image in the mirror is supposed to put it down. When you smile, the image in the mirror is supposed to smile back at you. When you frown, the same. So Jesus is the image of God. Jesus is the perfect image of God. So when the Father smiles, Jesus smiles. When the Father frowns, Jesus frowns. When the Father forgives, Jesus forgives. When the Father extends mercy, Jesus extends mercy. So when we study God's word, we, we, we want to see how Jesus treated the abuse of the power that God put inside of women. How did Jesus respond to it? So here comes uh, this woman. Let's read her story in um, John chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. 
Now, I want you to notice this. Now, early in the morning. Early in the morning. So that could have been 6 a.m. That could have been 7 a.m. Or even, you know, earlier, maybe 5. I don't know. But early in the morning, he came again into the temple. That was quite an early one. He started his day early. He came into the temple and all the people came to him. So people came to for morning prayers. People came for morning devotion at the temple. And they gathered to him. And he sat down. He sat down. So meaning that he, he, he was settled to teach. He, he, he had an agenda to communicate the truth to the people who gathered around him. He sat down and taught them. So in the midst of this teaching and the people were learning from him, then verse 3, then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. A woman caught in adultery. And, and when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. In the very act. So meaning that this woman was in, in, in some adulterous a, a situation, some compromising situation, some hours ago, the night before, and maybe, you know, the, maybe wherever she went to sleep with whosoever, a, a day broke and they caught her, maybe trying to, no, in fact, they say in the very act. So it wasn't that they caught her trying to escape from the scene, the crime, the crime scene, no, or the, 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 the sin scene, no. They said they caught her in the very act. And they brought her. So, so from the time they brought, they caught her, and the time they brought her, it's been maybe one hour, or maybe two hours, or three hours at, at most that they, she was in the act. So, so she is fresh, fresh, fresh with guilt, fresh with you know uh, uh, the sense of the wrong that she had done. So, so he brought her to the master. Now, verse five. Now Moses in the law commanded us that should commanded us that such should be stoned but what do you say that such should be stoned but what do you say all right this they said verse 6 now this they said testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him but jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear so when they continued asking him he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at, he, at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And when Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst, when when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. All right. So this woman is brought from the very act, from the bed of sin. They brought her to Jesus. I can imagine that she was not well, well dressed because they caught her in the very act. Now, now, the hypocrisy of her accusers is that adultery is never performed by one person. The, there was a man involved. They let the man go and they caught the woman. They let the man go and they caught the woman. Now, now what, is, what is annoying about these people is that according to the law, <laughs> According to the law of Moses, both the man and the woman are guilty. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 22. Let me show you. Deuteronomy 22 verse 22. Both the man and the woman are guilty. But they hypocritically let the man go and then they caught the woman and brought her. Isn't it what happens in, in our world today that every time that a woman abuses the power that she has, she is the one. Meanwhile, I mean, there were two people involved in this sin. But they let her, they let him go, and then they caught her. Let, let, me, let me read this scripture for you, then, then I continue. Deuteronomy 22, 22. If a man is found 
lying with a woman married to a husband, then both of them shall die. Both of them shall die. Both of them shall die. Did you see that? The man that lay with the woman and the woman, so you shall put away the evil from Israel. Both of them shall die. That's what the law stipulates. So, so they, they, they brought her and they said, the law of Moses said we should stone her. No, the law of Moses said we should stone her and stone the man. So, we, we learned something here that the systems of this world punishes women more. Punishes women first when the power they, that God gave them is abused. How did this woman abuse her power? Now, now when in this book, I talked about the, you know, the powers that God has put inside of women. There are so many of them. Uh, one of them is the power to um, stimulate. The power to stimulate. That power to stimulate is, in, is built into a woman. That's why, you know, you know, women are attractive. You know, women, women have an effect on men by the way she smiles, by the way she talks, by the way she stands. By, you know, everything about the woman, you know, it sends messages. What she wears, how the clothes are sitting on her body. Because she has the power to stimulate. She has the power to stir up. She has the power to arouse. She has the power to provoke. So, so what this woman had done, for we don't know what led her to adultery, you know, but some man was paying her attention, and, um, um, and you know, she, she got involved with this man, and they both, you know, went into the, into the scene of adultery. That was the wrong use of her power, the power to stimulate. And I, I explained in this book that the power to stimulate is only authorized to be used within the context of marriage. You are not supposed to be stimulating every, every man out there. That's why you got to be careful what you wear. Before you leave your house, look at yourself properly and see that you are not sending messages that you don't intend to send. That you are not, you know, releasing vibes that you don't intend to release. You carry the power to stimulate. Don't tell me, don't say things like, you know, it's my body and I'm free to wear what I need to wear. No, that's being irresponsible. You carry power. You know, when, when you have power, you, you have responsibility on how you manage the power. Is it responsible to say, well, hey, you know, anybody, you know, that gets offended or anybody that gets aroused, that's their business. No, you have tremendous power. You got to use that power wisely. You got to protect your power. It's like, it's like you, know, you, you know, if you have a, a firearms license and you, 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 you get a firearm and you have a license to the firearm. So, so in this country, you are officially authorized to carry that firearm. But also because what you're carrying is a, a lethal weapon, it's an extremely dangerous weapon that can kill somebody, there is, you have a responsibility on how you carry the firearm and how you protect the firearm. I know that one of the things before you, they issue you a license to, to own a firearm that you need to have a safe. You need to be able to put that firearm in a safe. You're not allowed to put that firearm anywhere carelessly. You take responsibility for that power because that weapon is extremely powerful. One pull on the trigger can send someone to the grave. So, so you, you are responsible for what happens to your firearm. And if your firearm is going to be on your body, according to the laws of this country, it has to be visible. You know, the, you have to carry it such that people can see that you carry a firearm and, and then they will stay away from you. You can't, you can't just conceal it. There are, there are, there are laws uh, uh, you know, around the use and the carry of firearm. Why? Because it has too much power. Power that can send someone to a grave, you know, carelessly. If it's carelessly uh, um, 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 used, someone can just die. So the same thing with the power that a woman carries. With the careless use of it, someone can die, literally. For the careless use of it, a family can be destroyed. A, a lifetime of, of building integrity can be destroyed. And we know many people who have been destroyed by, by that. Look at Samson, you know, an anointed man of God 
was brought to his knees because of the, you know, the, the wrongful use of the amazing power of woman by a woman called Delilah. You know, so, so whenever the power that God has put inside of a woman is abused, she is a recipient of the consequences. That's why you got to take responsibility. That's why you got to take responsibility. You because you you partake of the consequences of your wrongful use of your power. It affects you. Look at what happened in the Garden of Eden when Eve, you know, abused that power or allowed the enemy to hijack her power and abuse the power, and she ate of the fruit that God said they should not eat. And then she gave to her husband after she had eaten. Guess what? When the penalties were spelt out, can you see? She was affected more. She was affected. And, and both of them, you know, lost their home. They lost their marriage. The, 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 the first home where their marriage was, was birthed. They lost it. They lost Eden with all the delight, with all the extravagance of goodness. They lost all of that. She became, she became affected by the wrongful use of the power that she has. So it's the same principle. This woman is now being, you know, um, um, penalized for the wrongful use of the power to uh, pr uh, arouse, the power to stimulate. She had aroused this man too much. She had gotten herself into th this adulterous uh, uh, exchange, this adulterous engagement, interaction, that she was caught. And when they caught her, they, uh, you know, I don't know how they were not, you know, discreet enough in their, in their uh, uh, adulterous enterprise. It happened that they were caught. And when they were caught, they let the man go, and then they captured her. Meanwhile, the law says two of them are guilty, and two of them are subject to, to uh, stoning, death, capital punishments, death by stoning. Now, they let the man go, and then they caught her, and then they brought her to the, to the master in the temple. In, and they put her in the center of the temple, in the midst. Let everybody see how... This woman had broken the law. That's how this woman had, had used her power, has used her power unwisely. So, when they brought her to Jesus, and they told Jesus what her sin was, the Bible said they did this to test Jesus. What was the test? Are you going to approve of the law of Moses and... and um, and approve that this woman be stoned to death? Or are you going to say, don't kill her? And then when you say don't kill her, they will say, see, this man violates the law of Moses. He's teaching people not to obey the law of Moses. And if she says kill her, they will say, look at this man. He's a hypocrite. He was the one who was teaching about love and mercy and the kindness of God and the goodness of God. Look at what he's saying now. We should kill this woman. So they, put, they tried to put Jesus in a in a difficult situation. So he ignores them and starts writing on the floor. Remember he was teaching before. He had been teaching a group of people who, who had gathered around him and he was teaching them. So suddenly now these scribes and the Pharisees and, and all these people, they came with this accusation against this woman. So Jesus ignores them and bends down on the floor of the temple and begins to write something on the floor and begins to scribble something on the floor. And the Bible said, when they were not getting a response from, from him, they continued to trouble him. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? So Jesus lifted up his head and said to them, any of you that do not have any sin, let him cast the first stone. And then he bent down again and began to write. What wisdom. What wisdom. And then uh, the men who, who brought the accusation, one by one, starting from, starting from the oldest, starting from the eldest, one by one, they began to drop their stones and walk away. Began to drop their stones and walk away. And then after some minutes, Jesus observed that only himself and the woman were left in church. All the other ones have left the temple. They've gone. <laughs> They've gone. Service had ended. They are left. And Jesus says, ah, where are your accusers? Did anybody not condemn you? She said, nobody has condemned her. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. All right. Now, 
These are the things I want to bring out from this story. Number one, when you abuse your power as a woman, you suffer consequences. So in any area where you abuse the power, you are a beneficiary of the negative consequences. You are. So that's why you need to protect your power. You need to understand your power, protect your power, because the devil is wanting to use that power against you. Who lured this woman into adultery? Who lured her into adultery? How did she get carried away when she knows that the Lord of Moses has death penalty to adultery? How come she didn't realize, you know, what she was getting herself into? Now, I am not saying she's the only one guilty. Both the man and her were guilty. But I'm saying, how come she did not consider the consequences of her action? This woman, listen to me, please. This woman represents every woman out there who will knowingly or unknowingly, or who may, let me use the word may, who may knowingly or unknowingly abuse the power that God has put inside of them. Knowingly or unknowingly. So, so this woman represents all women because every woman out there, I don't know how many women are on the planet, with the power that God has given to you, there is a tendency or there is a probability, a chance that you will abuse that power one way or the other. So you need to pay attention to this message. This is God's attitude when that power is abused. This is God's response. This is God's approach when that power is abused. Now, they, they, these people are wanting, the law of Moses is, is um, demanding that this woman be killed. That this woman be killed. Let her, let her abuse of her power bring her to an early grave. This woman be killed. And that's what often happens when the woman abuses her power, it results in death. It results in the death of her marriage. It results in the death of her children. It results in the death of her career. It results in the death of happiness in her marriage. Or ultimately, it results in the death of her own life. Her, her body dies. That's what happens when their power is abused. So I, I, need, I need to put that on the table. Number two, people are quick to judge you when you abuse your power. People are quick. They are unforgiven. They want you to suffer the consequences. So that's why they brought this woman. You know, after, you know apart from the fact that they, want, they were testing Jesus to, to corner him so that they can accuse him and find something that he did wrong so that they can have a, a, you know, an accusation against him. But it wasn't going to work. So, so this woman here represents what how god responds to women when your power is abused first of all jesus was not willing to condemn her so i'm saying to you woman of god if you abuse your power or allow the power god has used given you to be misused or to be abused or to be hijacked by the devil number one understand this that god does not want you to be punished he wants to forgive you he wants to rectify the situation. He wants to uh, do damage control. He wants to pull you out. He doesn't want to punish you. He doesn't. Please don't believe the lie of the devil that God wants to punish you. No, it's not God that is wanting to punish you. It's the systems of man. It's the devil and the systems of man that want to punish you. It's not God. It's not God. So, so every time you abuse your power, listen, it's the devil and men that want to punish you, not God. Let me say that again. Every time you abuse your power or misuse your power or allow your power to be hijacked by the enemy, the person that wants to punish you is the devil and the systems of men, but not God. God does not want to punish you. Instead, God wants to forgive you. Now, I want you to understand something here, that by God's nature, God knows how to separate the sinner from their sin. Oh, get it? The sinner from their sin. Man often, and, 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 and that philosophy of man or that thinking or mindset of man is in the church. Man will often band together the sinner and his sin, the sinner and her sin together and punish them and kill them. God, on the other hand, on the contrary, separates the sinner from their sin. God loves the sinner. And God, listen, God loves the sinner. Let me say it again. God loves the sinner. God loves the sinner, but hates their sin. 
John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. When people say that God is angry at sinners, how? For God so loved the world. God is not angry at sinners. He loves sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves the world. God loves sinners. He loves them. He loves them. And his love is wanting to set them free from the bondage of sin. So only God separates, separates sinners from their sin. And we need to learn to do that. Separate sinners from their sin. Love sinners and hate their sin. And try to help them get rid of the sin and the consequence of the sin. See, what this woman is facing here is the obvious consequence of her sin. Obvious consequence of the abuse of her power. But Jesus is trying to protect her from the consequence. Jesus is trying to protect her from the consequence. So what did Jesus do? Jesus throws something out and says, okay, it's fine. You, the law of Moses is right. The law of Moses says, stone this woman. And my mercy does not allow me to stone this woman. So what are we going to do? So, so Jesus is saying, <laughs> I will forgive this woman, but I will not tolerate her sin. That was why his statement to her is, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more is, I am not tolerating this. I am not endorsing this in your life. You did wrong, woman. You did wrong, woman, but my mercy covers you. Ah, yeah. My mercy covers you. I am extending mercy to you. You are forgiven. You are rectified. You are redeemed. But go and sin no more. So every time you abuse your power, or you allow the enemy by carelessness, knowingly or unknowingly, to hijack your power and apply your power wrongly. Understand the position and the posture of God. God wants to forgive you. God wants to forgive you. God wants to turn things around for you. So for God to do that, God is, insists on separating the sinner from their sin. So we must learn to separate the sinner from their sin. So that's what Jesus did here. Jesus separated the sinner, the woman, the adulteress, she, he separated her from her sin, adultery. So he said to her, go and sin no more. She's talking to the person. Your sins are forgiven you. Go and sin no more. So, so, so by separating the two, he is able to protect her from the consequences of her sin. Her con the consequences of her sin was capital punishment. She was supposed to be stoned to death. But Jesus has rescued her from untimely death because he separated her sin from her and forgave the sin. So, so when people are doing things that offend God, people think people things that displease God, God is able to separate the, the people from the sin. God loves the sinner but hates his sin. God loves the sinner but hates his sin. And we need to learn to love the sinner and hate their sin. But, but what we often do is to condemn the sinner and the sin. Condemn the sin plus the sinner. So that the sinner ends up dying. No, that's not what God wants. God wants to forgive the sinner and, 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 and uh, forgive the sinner and then punish the sin or get rid of the sin or get, you know. In this case, Jesus got the woman free from her sin. Go and sin no more. So, when you abuse your power carelessly, intentionally or unintentionally, please understand this, that God in his mercy, is reaching out to you to redeem. He's reaching out to you to pull you up, pull you back up. He's reaching out to you to help you get out of this trap. Sin is a trap. Sin is a big trap. So, so he's trying to help you get out. And you need to now what? Agree with him. So for, in this woman's case, Jesus forgave her. And then separated her from her sin. I would expect that when you are forgiven for the abuse of your power, that you will, you will, you know, work with God to separate you from your sin so that you are free. You are free from the sin and the consequence of the sin. A -a Amen. I, 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 so so this, is, this, this is God's attitude when the amazing power woman is hijacked or compromised or, or abused. God wants to forgive. God wants to rectify the, 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 the woman and save her from the consequence of the sin. And if you understand that, every time you realize that you've abused your power, you can boldly, 
boldly come before the Father and say, forgive me. I receive forgiveness. And then be rest assured that when you ask, it was given. When you ask, it was given and you are forgiven. This is God's attitude to whenever we abuse the power that God has put inside of the woman. God's attitude is to forgive and restore and do damage control. Jesus did damage control for this woman. Saved her life from being cut short because of her sin. She was saved from being cut short. I'm going to stop there. I hope you got the message. The woman caught in adultery is teaching us every time that we abuse our power that we must we must surrender it to the Lord. He wants to forgive. He wants to cleanse. He wants to separate you from that sin. He wants to bless you. But he wants to, he wants to you know, get you away from the sinful situation. I am done. I want to encourage you. Share this link. Tell somebody about you know, the Amazing Power Woman broadcast that comes up on Thursdays. But beyond Thursdays, it's available on our YouTube channel. It's available on our Facebook page. So it's there 24-7. So at any point in time, you can log back in there and listen to these amazing teachings. Know this. If you, if, if you abuse the power God has given to you, God's first disposition towards you is for, to forgive you. Is to forgive you and to help you get rid of that sin. Separate you from the sin so that the sin will not eat you up. Hallelujah. That's it. Uh, if you if you like to contact us, the number on the screen, plus 27814210835, is the number to reach us. If you have a prayer request, if you have any kind of, you know, um, a need, just send us a message. It's a WhatsApp number, plus 27814210835, plus 27814210835. Send us a message, and we'll be glad to respond. All right, you can check out our YouTube channel, Pastor Chucks Obino, go ahead, or our Facebook page, Pastor Chucks Obino, go ahead. Just go there and you'll find all the teachings, both the ones we do Monday to Wednesday and the ones we do on Thursday and the ones we do on Friday and the ones we do on Sunday. They're all there. So, so God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week for another edition of The Amazing Power of Women. Next week, we have you ask your gynae. Ask your gynae is on next week, Thursday. Until then, God bless you. See you. The Power of Women Academy is a group mentoring program for high-impact women. Women who want to change their lives and their worlds and move on to the next level. Power of Women Academy is aimed and tailored at unleashing the passion and greatness locked inside you as a woman as you walk the journey of life over the mentorship period with our team of distinguished and well-accomplished mentors from all walks of life. Our mentors are indeed destiny helpers. These mentors come to inspire you. They come to encourage you, to challenge you, to teach you, to stretch you and to empower you. They are committed to helping you fulfill your highest potential and help you birth your wildest dreams that have been placed in you by God. For more information about the Power of Women Academy, please visit www.powacademy.co.za or for inquiries, call 064 200 1545.